This video is brought to you by FSP and their CMT 500 series cases. The CMT 510 offers a squared off look, three tempered glass panels, four RGB fans, and enough room inside for custom water cooling. The CMT 520 offers a more angular shape, front and side glass panels, four included RGB fans, and the best part is they're both priced in just under $100. See links in the description or visit fsplifestyle.com for more details. Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. All right, what's up, guys? Hi there, my name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers up here on the internet. Today on the program, we're uh, gonna, I mean, you already see it. No, I did not go and buy Threadripper. I seriously didn't. A very, very nice gentleman who is local to me, who buys way too many computer components and can never make up his mind on what he wants to use, uh, is a friend of mine. He was actually just going to let me borrow uh, his Threadripper system so that he could, uh, or I could, review the new Enermax RGB Lick Fusion or Lick Tech, sorry, TR42, which we'll look at in another video, a quick tech video. Uh, but today, uh, he actually just said, You can have all this stuff to play with for a little bit and uh, you maybe even you want to buy it because he's ridiculous and buys way too many high-end computers and then doesn't know what to do with them. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that at the end of the video. But 64 gigs of G-Skill is up on this motherboard. This is the Asus Zenith. I have to look at the box because I would never afford a motherboard like this. Zenith Extreme uh, X399 board it ha there's so much stuff in the bottom of this box. I don't even know, like, it, these expensive motherboards, they come with a thousand accessories. It doesn't even make sense. And several stickers. But it has, uh, you know, risers for the M.2 slots. It's just like a super wide motherboard. And we have a 19, or sorry, I keep saying 19, a 2950X, 16 core, second gen Threadripper locked in there. And we would have had this video done for just, just the, the cooler review a little while ago, but he ended up, um, uh, I, I guess something happened with the in installation of this thing, or the board was just screwed from the get-go. He had to send it back to Asus, and it's been like two months since Threadripper launched. And uh, I haven't been able to do this review, so we're going to get that out of the way. We're going to build a system, and then check out the case he gave me to build this in. Uh, some of these are my parts, some of them are his, but we're gonna we're gonna build a system. Ugh! In the Dark Base Pro, what is this thing? Keep quiet. I don't not ex I'm not uh, I don't usually have this kind of high end hardware around, so if you'll excuse me, there's a charging port on the top of it to charge your phone wirelessly. There's a you can open it up. It's got tempered glass. I really like this. Uh, so let's just go ahead and build a computer in it, and then we're gonna see how we can overclock a thread ripper. Because that's what I do here on this channel. I overclock a thread ripper. Don't you remember? I'm Timmy Joe. Make a build video. <laughs> doing this <sighs> okay it's turned on now but nothing it's not showing it's not posting 
It's like if the Threadripper doesn't fucking turn on, I'm gonna flip my gym. Jiminy Stinkles. Okay! What's up, guys? We're back. That was the first, I think that was the longest it's taken me to get a system up and running in a very long time. And it's the size of the motherboard, the amount of stuff that's plugged into it. And this case is the most frustrating case I've ever used. It's missing something, uh, a power connector, so I can't turn its RGB on. But I threw an RGB strip in there. Uh, but yeah, I cut myself twice in like near the same spot because of some sharp edges on it. The power supply uh, must be missing a bracket or something. I got it in there, but something's up with it. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't know, maybe I will be once it's, like, it's humongous, and maybe once it's, like, you know, there and doing a little bit of work for a couple of days that I've got this system, sure, but I don't know. Anyways, so we're Threadripper 2950X, 16 core, 32 thread, beast of a PC here rolling up, and, uh, you know, you want specs, I'll give you specs, you jerks, so... Uh, you know, we stole down here. We got 4.4 gigahertz max boost clock at stock. We've got uh, lots of stuff. 32 threads, 1.5 megabytes of L1 cache. Uh, you know, if you care about the cache, 8 megabytes of L2. Got a thermal solutions not included. Max temp 68 degrees. We're hitting that pretty close to that with this center max cool. We'll do the review on the center max cooler. A little bit later, we got the uh, Lictec TR4 RGB, which is hooked into the Asus uh, Zenith Crazy motherboard, and it's lighting up just the same as the G Skill RAM, so it looks pretty damn good. There's 64 gigabytes of RAM in this. So, uh, boo. Just wanted to run over how expensive this system is. So, a, a buddy of mine will say, like, he's a guy I'm kind of met through buying some stuff here in my hometown, but he's uh, a crazy person. He buys two or three systems and then you know picks one of them you know or something and then as soon as the new thing comes out he buys two new things which is just crazy so he spent oh wrong wrong keyboard there we go ryzen 2950x is 899 okay we've got eight nice one 900 bucks we've got a almost no i don't know what's going on with how that looks that looks really weird Weird. Uh, the motherboard's wide, but it's not that wide. Uh, almost $800 on the motherboard. I would say that maybe Bleepbox is not their original supplier. So I, I'm pretty sure he paid somewhere around $700 Canadian for this. So it's it's about a $600 motherboard. So they're right, $1,500. And then he spent $629 on RAM, 64 gigabytes of G Skill Trident RGB running at uh, it's 2666 right now because I can't get the XMP profile to load with all four DIMMs in it uh, at better than 2666. Huh, Threadripper problems, right? It's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. So, uh, remember I used to have a Threadripper? That was fun. Uh, for a little bit, I had a, a Threadripper uh, 1950X. And uh, I'm going to bring you up uh, here's my old Cinebench scores from it. So, because uh, I keep my Cinebench scores for this stuff. So, at, I believe I used to be able to run my Threadripper at 4.2 gigahertz uh, with the 360 version of this cooler, which was pretty nutso. And I was getting 3517 uh, on my best run. 3517. How things can change in like just a year. Now there's fucking 32 core version of this thing. Like, what are you getting, like, 5,000 in Cinebench? It just doesn't even make sense. So, what does this thing get stock? Uh, boo, there we go, I figured it out. Let's look at what the Cinebench is. 3,087, we'll just run it for fun. Because you're here to watch me overclock the snot out of a, what, $2,500 worth of motherboard, CPU, and RAM? Boom! Just got an RX 580 in there. Which doesn't, doesn't take too long. So we're almost getting 3,100 in uh, Cinebench. And the package temperatures, yeah, it's hitting around 60 degrees, 61. So we're not hitting the max on there, but I haven't even really made sure if the pump speed's all set properly or what have you and whatnot. So she's getting up there near what's supposed to be the max. But 30, 30 uh, 91. So that's, I'd say that's pretty good. So let's start to overclock. Boof. Huh. 
What was the max frequency on that? Do, 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 do. Oh, I should probably be hitting that on there. 4.4 max turbo clock. I guess that's on one core. Oh, man. I'm probably... This motherboard, I first turned it on and it didn't turn on. This is the second time we've had issues with this motherboard turning on. All right. It's going to turn on. Ah, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Oh, hamp fan. Okay. We're going to put that up to full speed as well. I don't know what ham fan is, but that's where, where that's where I could reach to put the pump in. So now we've got a full speed pump and a full speed CPU fan, and I don't have the glass on the case. So now we go back here, and we're going to go CPU core ratio. Why don't we just go crazy? I have 4.3 gigahertz. Huh? No, 43 gigahertz. There we go. <laughs> Overclocking enhancement enabled. I don't know what that means, but sure, we love... I, I, I'm going blind here, man. I haven't done any of this stuff. Where's uh, DIGI settings? I need some load line calibration. So, CPU sock voltage, CPU core voltage override. Hmm. I'm going to put this up to 1.42 just because I'm sure it's going to at least need that. And then tweaker... Oh, there we go. There we go. So, we need load line calibration. We'll set that all up to maximum. Because you're here to look at the maximum, right? Current capability, um, no, we don't want to do that. We don't have a good enough thermal solution to really be doing that. Is there SOC voltage? Yes, I should probably put this to like 1.2, I would imagine. Will it boot at this? I'm willing to wager no, but I'm crazy like that. So, 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 yeah, I'm in a good mood. I'm playing with a 16 core processor. What's your problem? Does she Cinebench? Bro, do you even Cinebench? Nope. One eternity later. Ugh. Okay, yes, I'm aware. SpongeBob reference. Ugh. It's been a frustrating time. I'm working at this for an hour now, trying to figure out how high the overclock will go. 4.2 gigahertz. Seems like that might be, might be the end of the line for that little doggy. 1.425 volts. Any higher, it's way too hot for this thing. And any lower, it's not stable. Got low line calibration set to 7 out of 9. 7 out of 8 or 9. And uh, remember, 35, like 17 is my record in Cinebench with the old chip. At probably a higher clock speed than this because I like a golden sample. So, are you going to do it? Look at all those cores fly. Man. That's a lot of cores flying. Pretty good little sample there. Making it happen. 35, 3478. 3478. What? What's the temperatures at, yo? 83 degrees. 83 degrees. So we're not even hitting my record before. This is super disappointing. Um, fingers crossed. Come on, you little doggy. Uh, uh, I was hoping it ran at a 4.2 gigahertz all the time, but... Yeah. I don't think so. 3511? What was my old Cinebench record? 3517? We gotta beat that, you jerk face. Come on, now. I actually think that the radiator has been permeated with the heat... And I did happen to get a little bit better score than that before. And she's stuck. Oh, man, that is disappointing. All right, well, here's proof, okay? <sighs> yeah. So I did beat it by, like, what, 20 or something like that? Um, just, that sucks. So and she's loud. It's all hell set up like this. So with, it goes to show if you got 16 cores. Quiet, you. Um, you're probably going to need quite the cooler, and I don't think a 240 mil is a good... It, it's got to be higher than that, you know? Turn back on. You're fine. Yeah, told you. Anyways, I love you guys. My name is Simi Joe. Uh, thanks so much for all the support with the uh, CES, whatever. If you want to see me do some fun stuff with Threadripper while I have it for a little bit, as well as if you're interested in purchasing this system, essentially... Uh, you maybe pick your own video card. 
I could probably get you a super smoking deal on it. So if you wanted to pass that along to me, uh, me at timmyjoe.com, if you're in the market for a Threadripper, and like I'm talking, you know, well below retail, but you know, within reason, send me an offer, me at timmyjoe.com. But I'm going to set it to, I guess, 4.1 all cores all time. I don't know if it's better to just leave XFR on, because it was pretty, you know, it's a pretty good, for, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it down to two notches. And maybe if we bring it down two notches and we change the volts because down a couple notches. Hey, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I get to play with Fredbur 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 for four days. And I really want to thank you guys so much for all your support on the GoFundMe for sending me to CES. I'm starting to arrange my plans. Uh, I was interviewed by the newspaper in my hometown this morning. Uh, because of this this fundraiser and the uh, massive support I've received, well over twenty two hundred dollars at this point, like a hundred and ten or hundred and twenty of you. And I was try I think I've uh, maybe got a few people I got to thank, but I've thanked almost everyone. So yeah, even Turbo's loud. Anyways, but Threadripper two, it looks like um, you need some damn cooling you know, capabilities. Maybe I could stick the rad out the window or something on a really cold night. Put it in some snow or something if that's what you guys want to see <laughs> but yeah if anyone's interested in buying this it's not mine i all just a friend's letting me borrow it and he's looking to sell it so let me know and we'll get back to you a little bit later with a uh, review on this cooler i'm still working on this now that i have another system i can put it in the the core i5 system and i've got all kinds of content planned for this week this was just a, i need to get the system built kind of intramural video day day intramural volleyball I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is at Watch to me, Joe, on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy Threadripper for a little bit. And go home and have a tea. I'll see you guys later.